Hello and welcome. My name is Ivan Holti and this is a tutorial on how to use threads in EMT and how you could benefit from the tool which I have made. It's called a load balancer and it's published on the Unit Asset Store. The tutorial series is mainly about threading in general, even though it has its base in a tool just to help and get started by. This is part two. You need thread safe code. This part of the tutorial series is about why threads are good, why do you need thread safe code, and using one or many parallel threads. Here you can see the demo of uh, the system. This is demo 2 in the load balancer where you have that tool. And here you can see all the 10 dots. This represents a task which needs to be executed. And it has three states, white, red, and green. Red is while it's executing, and green is when it's done, and white is having started. And all this text to the right is just describing what the current state, and you can also reset the state to white. And you can also reset the demo system. This is the yeah, you have a black sphere. And the black sphere is when a race condition has occurred. A race condition is when two threads are trying to access the same resource, for example, a task which needs to be executed or a class of an object and changing that state in parallel, and the outcome is not what they have expected. So, for example, a classical one, if you are adding to a list, one thread is trying to add and adds another instance to the list, then the other thread comes in and adds another, and then the third thread comes back and adds uh, whatever it wants to insert in the last spot, and then the next thread insert it in the last spot. So the two threads have made two instances in the list, which is correct, but the first instance is set to the default value since they did add them in series before they are inserting their value. I will go over the buttons in a short. Uh, stop load balancer, start load balancer, start and stop load balancer. And you can also see that nothing works when I have put it in the stop state. Build in one frame uses the main thread and just executes all these tasks in one frame. Each task takes 0 0.4 seconds to execute. And so if you will press this button, it will take a total of 4 seconds to execute all the 10 tasks in the main frame in one frame. You can build using a thread, and this is when you have not thread safe code, and this is the buttons for this. And then you have thread and then thread safe priority zero using the load balancer. So this is thread safe code, and this is how you should implement it. And this is another way of doing it when you're using the tools possibility to prioritize and using Q in the load balancer. Let's start with building one frame. I'll go to the code. Here we have build in one frame. We have the builder. The builder is of the type control if you're now into the model view control pattern. I highly recommend reading up on that and using the model view control pattern when you're dealing with threads. Because in this case, for example, I have the model of the object, which is whatever is executing. It has the state, the color, starting as white, and a locked object, which is the object which it's locking onto, and the object of the interest view, which is the view of the model. And if you look at this, we have a builder also. And this is like the control 
it's not directly connected to the model. So you can have one control and many models. Then you have a view. You have normally one view for each model. And in my case, I've made it so that the view is updated in update. You can see it here. It, uh, it has a model. And if the render.material.color is not equal to the model.color, it just updates the color. So it doesn't really care about the watch state or whatever it's doing. It's just checking and representing the state to the player. Let's go back to the user interface. Here we have the add build all spheres. Let's go to decoration. And here you see that we go over the list of spheres. We have 10 spheres, so we should could insert 10 here, but better practice is to use the count variable and then build sphere. And then we have the sphere of interest. So if we go to the build sphere function, we just go through it in three states. We start with white and then we change to red to like grabbing the task. And this is where the problems occur. Normally this takes about some nanoseconds, but I have changed it to 200 milliseconds just to make the race conditions occurring more current and more often. Otherwise it's only occurring like once every hour. And that would be a pain in the ass when you're trying to debug, and that's why race conditions are so hard to find. And then the actual work with 200 milliseconds here, the build time, and then change to green. And if we look at the reset, it's not thread safe code, and you can see here it checks if the color is green, and then it takes about some nanoseconds, and then if the color is still green, it changes to white, and then it, if it's not green, if a race condition has occurred, it changes to black. And I said some nanoseconds. I increased this time to 200 milliseconds just to make the race conditions occur more frequently. But in normal execution, this will happen maybe once every hour, once every day. And this is the reason why race conditions are so hard to track down and we will like look at it in the execution build in one frame press that and you can see everything freezes and boom max frame length is 4.0262 and this means that all this was built in one frame and if we ask to reset the system it's touch up again, and if we do this in a thread, thread instead, we use a thread and go to that. So if we do it this in threads instead, it's exactly the same stuff as we did in the main thread, but now we call a different function. Previously, we used the add main thread at work, but now we're using add thread at work build using a thread. So it's exactly the same code. You must before go over all the objects and build all the spheres using the builder. And here can you can see the builds and the resets. And here when, when the rate condition starts occurring. Let's see if we can get the black state. Of course there can also be a rate condition up here, but I haven't make it possible to check for it, even though it can occur here, since we only need to check for it in one place just to understand what the race condition is. So if we start building, and then we reset twice, then they will follow each other, and reset, 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 and then the other one will come just the 200 milliseconds after, and detect that it has the white state and then change it to the other state when it has changed back to white. So it's green, white, and then black by the last run of the reset. So if we see this again, this dem system, build and then twice using the reset thread, down, down, we see it all black.
So it goes from green to white, and then the other reset function uh, goes in when it's switching those nanoseconds, and then uh, which is actually 200 milliseconds in the, this demo. And then the first one is changing it to white, and then the second one is trying to change it to white, but since it's not green anymore, it will change it to black to simulate the race condition which has occurred. To solve this, you can use a thread safe code. You should use thread safe code. Let's look at this in the code. Here we have the thread safe and build all spheres thread safe. We'll go to that in the control pattern. You can see this is the control part. You remember, model the view part. So here we go over exactly as before. And if we go to this function, we have one difference here. We have the sphere, which is the model. Is actually trying to change from white to red. If it succeeds, then it will continue and build, and this is the build time, and then it will try to change from red to green. And uh, if you look at the resets, it's exactly the same. If the sphere can change from green to white, then uh, it doesn't need to do anything, then it has to release it. And if we go to look in these functions, they all look the same. It has a lock in the top and it's locking the states changing. And then if the color, which is the actual color you are currently want to change from, then change to the color you want to change from and return true. But if the color is not the color you want it to be, and you return false. Why this is nice is because you have a state machine and you can follow the task between threads and contacts like main thread and threaded threads and you can also be sure it has only one state and one accessing this. So you can change it from an accessible state to a non-accessible state that no one else should access. So if we have a red object only one which has made it from white to red should access it. This is something you have to control by defining it as a user. And I like this kind of pattern. So then I know that if it has changed from white to red, and since it's locked, no one else can have done anything in between. And you can see here the normal second delay is increased to 200 also. The reset, which is here, green to white, has also this black state here, you can see. It changes from to green, and then it waits for, if the color is green, it waits for 200 milliseconds, and then it tries to check if it's still green, of course it will, since we have a lock, and then it changes to white, and if for some reason, it didn't succeed, it would change to black. But since we have this lock here, if we go up to the declaration here, you see the object lock, which is just a standard object. Uh, as you can see, I, I had an underscore, and this is to point out that this is private variable, and this makes it easy when you are using IntelliSense, uh, since then I can just press underscore to get all the private variables for the class. So this is the pattern I use in my code, so you can remember it and it will help you understand it. Let's look at this in the execution. If we build using a thread and double tap the reset thread in the safe code, thread safe code, you see no black spheres. And the reason for this is that we have a lock the state object which is in the model. You can of course also do this in parallel using the tool and uh, of course we have used the tool all the time but you could have done this using just yes, start threads and this is a problem since it takes time and resource to start threads 
and that is something you normally don't have when you're using threads and that's why you're using thread pools but thread pools as I've discussed before is not an option in unity do not use thread pools in unity or you will end up messing around with stuff you are not you don't know what it actually does so if you build all using priority if you have priority 1 here and 10 here press this you can see it's building in parallel let's reset it build again let's see and what's happening is that we have set the max number of threads to 3 and then it's pushing everything in one um, function call and then the load balancer is dividing the work between the threads as soon as one thread has complete, it will try to push the next task into the threads. Let's look at it in code. Here we have it build all using the priority left hand, right one. And here we have the object O. This is the sender. You can see here, ref O, uh, which is the ref object sender. And then we have not the unique sender. We're not using the high priority queue, but we use the priority. You see, I is the priority, so for the lowest value, it's priority 1, and for the highest, it's priority 10. Then, the state object, which is the actual model we want to change, and you can see that we are making the object an object here, type casting it, and this is the model. The list of objects of interest, and then it's stored in the state object and inserted into the function call. And then we have the actual function which are executing on the state object. And if we go to this, it's just the standard one build spheres thread safe, but this time it has uh, there we have it the object class so it has two types this one is uh, inter taking a of interest model and this takes an object because you need to have the right pattern so object of interest sphere is just typecast from the object sphere which is inserted object state and then we just build it thread safe as normally to the declaration you remember this if we can change from one white to red in a thread safe way then we can do some thread not safe code since we're holding this object so we can do whatever we want with that object and then we return this object by going red to green and then it's all done so the last thing is to stop and start if we stop the load balancer and we try to build using the thread or reset or build in one frame nothing is responding but if we start it and then build in using threads and then stop it stop it you see this is not working why this is because the stop load balancer will let the threads complete and then it will stop it but if we're using this build all thread using priority left, then it's dividing it between threads. We just use one thread and then we reset the demo system and build it all using one. Stop the load balancer and then stop it. You see it stops immediately. Or not immediately, as soon as the last thread has stopped executing. So start the load balancer. It's all cleared, and then we start again, and then stop the load balancer, it just stops. Thank you, that was all for this part. This was the second part in the Threads in Unity tutorial series. It has used the load balancer, which is a tool in the Unity S store, it's published. And there's a link in the description if you want to catch it. And also all the code which I've shown today, it's also included in that tool under demo 2. Any improvements or requests, please leave them in the comments. And until next time, bye!